Hey, what's up, YouTube? Came here for T Baker today. Coming to you guys in the video, and today uh, we're doing a basically my recap of the Yu-Gi-Oh Norcross Georgia Regional that took place on October 13, 2013. So I'm gonna talk about the day, show you guys what I played with, and talk about some changes I could have made to the deck. Also, talk about what I saw in Top 16. So let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, the regional, there's a lot of things I can say about this regional. It's probably one of the most unorganized regionals I've been to in a long, long time. And it was easy things to fix, too. It wasn't like things that were impossible. First off, uh, I, and I'm, I don't, if you guys watched the previous video where I talked about Team Baker Strips was going to be at the regional, you, would, you heard me talk about how they, the card shop, or Konami had people from the card shop uh, walking around with sales bi cell binders trying to sell people cards to get them caught, to get them kicked out of the uh, venue. They also had random bags placed around the uh, venue to where even if you touched them, you were to be kicked out of the building regardless of what your intentions were. Uh, I guess because you can't prove what someone's going to do when they pick up a random bag in the place. Although, I like to see the good in people, so I, were to, I, I was to assume that if someone would pick up the bag, they were going to take it to a judge. However, there were still things being stolen from the stolen at the uh, the regional. Uh, they made several announcements how people needed to watch their stuff because people were stealing it. So clearly, what they were doing was not working. Um, the vendors were su the the car shop that was hosting was Galactic Quest. Now I understand that you can't compete with eBay. I fully I fully understand that car shops cannot compete with eBay. That may I mean that's completely understandable. But however. You can at least sell your cards for reasonable prices. They were like overpricing most of their cards. Like they had, I believe, Madolce Magellan was like an eighteen dollar card. Who the hell wants to spend eighteen dollars on a Madolce Magellan? And if you were selling it, they were only giving you like five. Uh, they were selling their big eyes for like eighty five, and then buying them for thirty five. It was just like ridiculous prices. They weren't selling a lot of cards all day. Uh, they were mostly buying all day. No one would buy, uh, sell buy cards from them. It was, uh, I think. I bought one card, and usually I buy four to five cards from vendors at events, and I bought one card, and that was an HTS Sihemoth. And I probably could have picked it up for a lot easier off of someone else, but I wanted to go ahead and buy it to prevent the hassle. I bought it for $4. The card goes, from what I've seen, for about one to three. So I spent maybe a dollar more than I should have, but compared to the other stuff. Um, they were doing some pretty do good things with their... Uh, at the beginning of the day, uh, they were selling their Joey's Worlds for thirty dollars, um, same as that price anywhere else. But I not I noticed they dropped it down to twenty as the event went on. I didn't buy one, but I knew people that were buying them. Um, the venue capped out at about four hundred and twenty-seven players, I think it was something like that. Uh, it was the largest regional for Georgia we've had in a long time, and. Um, it was just extremely unorganized. Um, so it, it it almost took an hour between rounds for them to get pairings up. And when they got pairings up, there was only two spots on the walls where they had the pairings. So it was a huge huddle around both of those areas. Whereas I feel like if they had four different sets of pairings in the building, it would have been a lot easier. People would have been able to found the round. So there was about a thirty minute there, there was about a thirty to forty minute grace period between the rounds. About another 30 minutes it would take people to find their pairings, and then about another 10 minutes it would take for the round to start. <clears throat> so about round 6, it was 10 o'clock at night. <clears throat> I went 3-3. Three and three. Um, I did okay. I wasn't planning on topping. Uh, I didn't think I was going to do very well. I was, I was playing with Mermels, um, and I'm not very comfortable with the deck. I know how to play the deck, <clears throat> but um, I'll, I'll talk about my rounds later. And... Um, Another thing that really, really bothered me, and it ultimately uh, what led to me dropping from the event, because I still could have made like top 48, uh, but it ultimately led to me dropping was uh, just the cigarette smoke was so massive in this area. It was at a Hilton hotel, and the the, ven the venue that we were or the the convention area that we were at had these giant bay doors that were open, and everyone was standing in front of the bay door smoking, so the cigarette smoke was just blowing in the, the building the entire time, and it, it wasn't until about round four or five where they finally told people to get away from the door, but at this point, this entire room is filled with cigarette smoke, so had a killer headache. 
uh, the whole day, and I, I would the the food was outrageously priced. Like it was like four to eight dollars for a hamburger when you could literally walk right next door to a Publix and buy one for like a dollar eight fifty or something. It was stupid. Um, other than that, I I had a lot of fun. Um, I was planning on filming some of the day, but I didn't realize that if you use this Yu-Gi-Oh calculator in your iPhone, that the it would just ruin the battery. So I had uh, my phone by around five, my phone was dead. So I couldn't even like keep track of my life points. Um, <clears throat> other than that, uh, I'm gonna show you guys what I played, and we're going to uh, talk about my rounds. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so I ended up playing Mermels. Uh, like I said already, I'm gonna go through the deck. I'm not playing the OSHA build, and I'm gonna explain why. A lot of people feel like the OSHA build's great, and it, it's okay because it top it made top two at the uh, I think it was YCS Toronto. I don't even remember honestly. Either way, I don't like it. Um, and a lot of Mermel players would agree with me on this because. You lose a lot of card advantage when you go for that play. And a lot of times when you make the OSHA play off of the Abyss Teus, all you have to fall back on with the Stride is the Teus Engrave. So it's really not even worth it. It's okay late game. And it's it's just not, I don't know. Like, if, when I draw into OSHA, I just, it's like, oh my god, I have so much. I usually have a better play to make. So <clears throat> instead, I went, I went for a more Synchro-based uh, Mermel deck. And I, I haven't made any changes to the main deck. I have made some changes to the extra deck since playing at the regional. So um, I'll go through it all. So you make your, you know, you have your standard three Megalo. That's a staple. Uh, standard three Teus. That's also a staple. So I mean, this is all very standard. Uh, your one lead. I like lead. Um, it's a, a 2,700 beater. And every time I make a land and spear play, this is my go-to guy. Plus, I mean, you know, you can send cards from your opponent's hand to the graveyard, which is really nice. And if you actually manage to get him off uh, by playing him, by, you know, sending three water monsters from your hand to the graveyard, <clears throat> you can add an Abyss card from your graveyard to your hand. So he's a good late game. Um, <clears throat> three Lind. It's very standard. Three Pike. Uh, I played one Turge. I really... I have nothing better to play over him, and I don't want to play Osha because I don't like the Osha build, but I lost the game because of him. Because I had no water targets in my graveyard for him. So I couldn't get any of my discards off. <clears throat> and I wasn't drawing into Megal or anything like that. So I lost the game because of him. Uh, I don't really like him. and I, But there's really no... I don't... I, I, don't I'm my, I myself don't know of a better option to throw in over him. So any suggestions, I very much appreciate that. Uh, three Gunned. I'm probably going to limit that. I don't like Three Gunned. I dead draws all day. Even even with discard fodder, dead draw. I mean, even, even with a discard outlet, dead draw all day. I, I, I don't like it. So, probably going to limit that. Um, might throw in... You know, I'm not really sure what I'll put in over that. I don't know. I'll hit that I'll hit that uh, when it comes time for me to do that. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, three gun. It, it was okay. It worked out a lot better than the church, tell you that. Uh, three title. I didn't see this card once, all day. Not once. But, um, I, I did dump him in the grave uh, at one point. I think I, no, I think I drew into him, but I had nothing to discard for him, so I summoned the Pike and I discard him. Discard him. Um, either way, I wasn't able to get his effect off. I summoned him once, and I think he was bottomless, so I wasn't really able to get his effect off much. Um, however, for Dylan though, Dylan was also playing Mermels, and he said that he opened up a title every game. Uh, so I don't know. Three infantry. Uh, I like three infantry, especially because uh, back row is not as prevalent as it has been the past couple formats. Uh, there are a lot of back row heavy decks, and I side accordingly to that. I'm also not going to go over my side deck. Uh, I don't sh I don't share my side deck. I just never have. Two marksmen. Uh, basically the same reason I just said. Uh, one Dragoons. You have to play one Dragoons. But Dragoons is good. I ran Dragoons a lot today. Uh, a lot of my Dragoons play were off of the... Or not today, yesterday. A lot of my Dragoon plays were off of the Teus and Dragoons. So. I uh, played two Aqua Spirit. I don't like three. Three is really cloggy. Uh, it just doesn't work for me. I play Diva. I love Diva. <clears throat> Since I'm playing more of a synchro based deck, Diva was great. Diva played well for me all day. I, I would either go into an Armory Arm, a Balmung, or a Cataster all day. I, there was even some times where I would go Diva, uh, Marksman, Tackle Marksman, get out in Atlanta, uh, whatever that thing's called, Heavy Infantry, and that's <clears throat> a level 7. So really nice. Uh, Fishbowl Archer, <clears throat> amazing card. I love that card. Pitch off, uh, discard your gun to summon him and then get a gun's effect off. It's great. 
uh, two max C, one Valor. Uh, I love two max C, one Valor. I, that it worked amazing all day. I had Valor when I needed it. Max C, obviously, I always had that in my hand. Uh, Gorse, Gorse is good. Look, Gorse. <clears throat> so that's my monsters. It's thirty-four monsters, and for spells, three MST. Uh, I didn't want to take out of MST for a dark hole. I didn't really feel like I needed it, and three Abyss Sphere. And that's all you really need for traps. And I mean, that worked out great all day. I had MST when I needed it, and everything else. <laughs> so the only thing I had a problem with getting was a uh, title to my hand. I never really had title. Uh, so for the extra deck, I played one Draco Sack, one Big Eye. I don't really feel like I need one more or of the other of this card. I feel like one of is actually nice. Um, the only thing that sucks, though, is if I go Big Eye first, they're more than likely going to take my Big Eye with their Big Eye. So it's just... it's a very, it's very You have to play this card very smart. You can't just go into them because you can. Uh, one guy else, I feel like the one guy else is okay. Um, this was something I threw in after the regional because there were so many situations where I could have made him and it would have been game. So... I took out, uh, I can't really remember what I took out for this card. It was something that I didn't even play all day, so I'm not really sure what that was. Uh, one Cowboy, I went for I went Cowboy for game a lot. Uh, one Dweller, Dweller is amazing in the mirror match, and it's amazing when you need to run over stuff. Uh, one Bahamut Shark, probably one of the best main phase two cards in, in the game, in my opinion. What for Mermails, anyway, I can't really say that. And then Strike for the Bahamut Shark. I only play one Strike because I don't run the OSHA engine. Uh, now, oh, I took out, okay, I took out Stardust Dragon for the, uh, I just remember, yeah, I took out Stardust Dragon for the Guy Charger, because uh, I didn't go into Guy, I didn't go into Stardust Dragon once, never had the reason to. Um, one Crimson Blader, uh, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of you are, that don't realize that I play Valor are asking, how do you go into Crimson Blader? Well, I go into Crimson Blader through Valor and, and a level 7 monster, so, um, very rare chance I get that off. But when I do, I want to go into Crimson Blader to try and lock the field down. I did win a game because of Crimson Blader, so it worked out very well. Uh, one Black Rose, stable. One Gungnir. I like Gungnir. Gungnir is really, really good. Especially since I play the Diva engine, and I also play the Archer. So Gungnir is amazing. This was a Dulorn, and I lost so many rounds because of Dulorn. I there I was never had a target on the field to bounce back for Dulorn to get his effect or anything. So I put in a Sahemoth because this would have actually won me a game if I had Sahemoth. So, I, I have that option now. Uh, on the chance that I can go for a level 6, I would honestly rather have a Sahemoth anyway. Dulorin can be very dead as sometimes. Cataster. Stall games with Cataster all day. Love Cataster. That card's amazing. Armory Arm. I made him one game. Um, and I think, I think I had the field locked in at that point. So, it, honestly, it wouldn't have really mattered. But it helps with his effect to go for extra damage. And I play a Balmong. Because uh, I will say this. I side deck Deck Devastation Viruses. And Balmong is a good 2100 beater, and it's just an easy card to get on the field to put pressure on the board early with Diva. So it helps out very. It helps out a lot. I went to him a lot, or, or actually no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't go to very many level fours, but when I go to level fours, I had him, so I like that. And I don't. I don't really have any other reason to take any of these other cards out and replace them. So that's that. That's my deck, and that's what I played. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my rounds here, how I did. All right. So round one, I probably ended up playing against one of the most creative decks I'd seen in a really long time. Um, to, just just for someone to be playing something like this at a regional was just kind of weird. Or it was okay. It wasn't necessarily weird. It just caught me off guard. Um, it was Black Wings mixed with Destiny Heroes. It was just very odd. Like he had Destiny Heroes and, and Plague Spreaders in it. It was just very, very strange. Um, he game one. I didn't see a single Destiny Hero. All I saw was Black Wings. So I assumed he was playing on Black Wings. So when I went into game two, I won game one. Uh, because I kept going big eye, taking his arm wing and all that stuff, so he couldn't really do much. And black wings, when you limit the black wings they have on the field, they can't make call loot plays, so you pretty much win. Uh, he didn't have any back row either, so it was kind of odd. Um, so I was just like, okay, I guess he doesn't draw his back row. He had black wings in his hand, so I just kind of played that, and I won that round. Uh, round two, he opened up with Diamond Dude. Uh, by the way, I didn't side anything in against this guy either. I put in a compulsory because I didn't really have anything sided for Black Wings. And I'm very glad I didn't overside either because if I would have overside it, I probably would have lost. Um, game 2 opens up Diamond Dude. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, he's siding the Destiny Heroes? Turns out his deck was mixed with Destiny Heroes. So it was just very odd. He plays Destiny Dude. Fortunately, didn't hit anything with it. Um, ends up having, like, after, like, Right after the turn three, he ends up having like a diamond dude, some other stuff on the field because that didn't draw very well. I don't, I can't really remember what he had on the field. I think it was an arm wing or something else. 
and a and a, a crimson blader. He didn't get crimson bladers back though. Uh, I don't I don't don't think I can't remember. Or it might have been a Stardust. I don't know. He had a bunch of stuff on the field. Um, I ended up big on. No, no, he had a Vortiger Dragon. That's right. He had a Vortiger Dragon on the field. He had a lot of pressure on the board. He had Vortiger Dragon some other stuff on the field. I ended up going. I ended up a. Uh, oh, Voyager. Okay. He had Vortiger Dragon, Armades, and uh, something else. I ended up going into Megalo, sent infantry and gunned, pop Armades, um, got back lead off a of gunned, overlaid for Big Eye. Took his Warrior Dragon, ran over, I believe it was a Diamond Dude, and kind of had field presence from then on. Uh, he went to another monster, couldn't run over anything, so I took a big eye and went for a game. Um, really surprising on that part. Really good game. Guy had a very cool deck. Very, very cool deck. And he'd already made his top, so he was just playing for fun. So really, poor poor mismatch. Um, really cool guy. Love to play that with that guy again. A very, very original deck. I had never seen anything like it. Um, so that was awesome. Uh, round two, uh, I was table 40 something. Played against a Gear Jakarakuri deck. Um, now I know these decks have been kind of running rampant and regional, so I was a little scared. I had nothing sided for it. Like, I honestly came into this tournament unprepared. Uh, but playing against a Gear player, and unfortunately, I was drawing into nothing the entire game. Like, game one. I didn't draw anything till he had a Girja Gun X on the field, uh, Karakuri Pareto, the other Karakuri Synchro, uh, I think he had a Gores too, and then finally I draw on a Megalo, and I pitched for Megalo's effect, and he played Warning on it, so I was like, okay, you got a game. Uh, game two, I sided in Chain Whirlwind because it's a Girja trap card, and all that, and I was, I was afraid he was going to side to Dimensional Prisons and Soldiers and all that, so I sided in Chain Whirlwind. Um, I left the MSTs in there, and I sided into Torrential, Dark Hole, and Lightning Vortex. Lightning Vortex was my side deck tech of the day, because you can pitch gun with Lightning Vortex pop cards on the field. So it was really nice. Um, sided into all that. I saw the Chain Whirlwinds. I was able to get Chain Whirlwind off twice. Uh, he still beat me. He just had more field presence. I couldn't draw. I wasn't really drawing any monsters. I drew all the discard, but I didn't draw any discard outlets. So he got me. Um, good game. Very cool kid. He was 11 years old. Beat the shit out of me. <laughs> Uh, that was a fun game. I enjoyed it. Game three, Poe didn't show up. <laughs> so, free one. Game four, or no, wait, no, no, game, no, game, okay, no, game three, or round three, I uh, played against a mirror match. I played mirror match. That, his duel was back and forth. There's really not much to say about it. He's playing the Undyne Engine. I was playing Mono. It was back and forth. Uh, and eventually he just had more advantage over me at the end of the game. Um, I, I went from having a Draco Sack, two tokens, Megalo, and a Pike to having nothing on the field, him having a title and something else on the field, and it was a really good game. Uh, he won that game. I had a lot of fun with that guy. Probably one of the best Monroe players I've ever played against in my life. Very, very fun round. Uh, even though I lost. I don't care. It was, it was very enjoyable. Um, round four, opponent show up. Free one. Round five, opponent didn't show up. Free one. Round six, playing against Frog Monarchs. Um, wasn't getting any kind of advantage. He just kept bouncing my monsters back with Ryza. Lost one round because of Turge. And round two, uh, really wasn't seeing anything. Uh, he banished my title, with, or banished my Lind with Caius. Couldn't do much. So, after that, I dropped. Uh, had a killer headache. It was really fun, though. I had a really fun playing. Uh, got to hang out with my friends. Just, it was a very unorganized tournament. Very unimpressed with the way they handled some situations in the tournament. Honestly, wouldn't never go to Galactic Quest's card shop. I'd, whenever they were selling cards to people, they were treating them very unfairly. They were low-balling them as low as they can get. Like, I understand they have to make a profit, but asking for, like, 35 for a big eye, that's a little ridiculous. Um, but I mean... People were selling it to him, too, so that was their own stupidity. So I can't really say much about that. But I, I would never go to a Galact I would never go to one of Galactic Quest's card shops. I just do not like the way they handled their customers. I felt like they were very unfair to people. Um, they had smirks on their face the entire time they were selling you stuff and, and buying stuff from you. Uh, just very ignorant. Um, so that's just my opinion on them, and that's just the way they came across the regional. So they could be different at their card shop. I don't know. That's just how they presented themselves to me, and I can only make an assessment off of that first impression. So, Never been to a Galactic Conquest, Conquest car shop? Probably never will. 
So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, I wasn't, I guess, I wasn't as very informative, and uh, I can't really say much about the top 16 because I didn't really get a lot of research. But from what I noticed, it was nothing but Evil Swarm and Dragon. So, so you know, that's interesting, right? But other than that, um, I had a lot of fun. Plan on doing going to some more regionals, and I'll catch you guys later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, you should subscribe to hang out with us more. Alright, fuck it. What's up, dude? Okay! <laughs>